When you live like a chosen one, guess what? You're expecting to hear from God. You, how many, how many, I'm going to tell you something. How many, how many real seriously don't expect to hear from God? They don't, don't and they will. Because they don't know how God speaks. Oh. Okay. Now listen, that's good. We have a brother saying, I probably a lot more than hear that saying, that well, I don't expect to hear from God. Because, you know, I tried for years and years. I never hear God. Man. But if you don't expect to hear from God, expect not to hear from God. Because the just shall live by faith. I, I, I expect to hear from God. I expect God to meet my need. I expect to have favor. I expect to be blessed. You understand what I'm saying? That's the key to everything. Is, is number, number one, uh, absolutely surrender everything. Your whole heart to God. All your problems, everything. Surrender to God. And secondly, expect. Expect God to move on your behalf. Expect it. Don't expect, uh, don't start beating yourself up. I'm always a loser. Always going to be a loser. I'm this, I'm that. I'll never be married. I'm always going to be lonely. Uh, this marriage is so boring. I don't know why I got married. And boom, 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 whatever you have to say. Or why do I have so many kids? Or why don't I have enough kids? Or why wouldn't I have kids? You know, all these things right here. You can't say any of that stuff. Don't, don't, don't put yourself down. Don't beat yourself up. God does not. How many know that God wants you to hear Him? Amen. God wants you to hear. You know how bad you want it to God to hear you, and you want to hear God. God wants you to hear you Him better than you want to hear Him. But He He put certain rules and regulations that He set up for us that we may have a ear and ear to hear from Him. And when God says He wants you to be obedient, better than sacrifice, then He's talking about you got to start working at this. It's something that's developed. It's not something that happens like that. It's a development. You have to develop a hearing ear from God, and you start with your heart. You start being sensitive. I mean, if I go back there and I see that thing, that 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 water empty, and I go and I know there's five or six full water. Five gallon water things in the in, in, in the in the nursery there. I'll wait for someone else to do it. And God said, as soon as I got that thought that there's no water in there, I should put it in there. But I'll get somebody else to do it. As soon as you walked away from doing that, that was God putting that thought on you to do something good. Because the Bible said God anointed Jesus and He did it, went around doing good. You just lost. A, a, you just became insensitive to the Spirit. And you start building on that insensitivity. Pretty soon you're, you're very insensitive. You're insensitive to people's feelings. You care less. You're insensitive to God's word. You're insensitive because you didn't take the little things that God told you to do. God might have told you to go over there and hug that sister. Well, she would look so mean and mad. But God just said, you didn't hug at you all day. Go hug that sister. And as soon as, you know, as soon as you're obeying that, that gets you a little more sensitive to God. You see what I'm saying? He might go, say, go, go, go help that brother. That brother don't help nobody. That brother ain't a servant to nobody. I ain't going to help him. No, God put on your heart to help that brother. Why? Because God wants you to start being sensitive to him. This is how it all developed. It developed with the little things. A little, a, a little kid that learns how to walk never just walked. He had to fall three or four times or more. Right? Eventually, he caught on. Eventually, you're going to catch on and be sensitive to God. Pretty soon, you're going to be communicating with God and, 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 and dilate, dialoguing with God on a regular basis. Who wants that? Come on. Come on, folks. Right. Turn to Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. We're talking about living in the Spirit, living in God's presence. When you live in God's presence, you're living in the Spirit of God. Amen? Now, when you're living in God's presence, you're going to be hearing God's voice. But there's also ways to make sure it's God. Not every voice you hear is God. Right, brother? How many know where God lives?